Okay, here we have a uh, Macan headlight. This is from a 2017 model. And this model does not have um, PDLS. So this is a static headlight assembly. Um, if your car has PDLS, it may, you know, likely will be similar. You have just different assembly inside. Um, but as you can see here, the headlight lens is pretty marked up. Not looking great. So what we're going to be doing is changing out this headlight lens assembly with a new one um, that I ordered through eBay. Uh, you can also find them on AliExpress in China. Up to you. I, I have no point of view on what's good, what's bad. Um, but anything is better than this. So, uh, to start off, um, let me just show you the... This is the model number on my headlight, just in case you're curious. Um, but to start off, the first step in doing this, I've already done my other headlight, um, is you need to take a Dremel or some sort of a cutting tool. If you have a sonic cutter or something that's very, you know, it's better than a Dremel. Um, you're going to go around, you're going to cut the lens off, right? Because when you see in here, there's little screws, uh, like right here. See that little, little screw in here? The headlight assembly is mounted by screws, well the lens is, underneath all of this, right? So the first thing you're going to want to do is essentially cut around the perimeter. You got to be careful because there's black uh, trim inside. So you don't want to cut so deep that you're cutting into that trim. You don't want to cut these screws. You want to be on the other side of the screw, the headlight side of the screw, not the housing side. And essentially you want to go around the whole thing. And then this lens, once you've done that with a Dremel, I'm going to be using a plastic cutting wheel. Um, this lens will then pop right off. Um, so I'm going to do that off camera. Uh, just some minor thoughts. Wear a mask because you're shredding plastic. Wear eye protection. And goes without saying, if you are not comfortable taking on something like this, don't do it. Send it out. Have a professional do it. Um, I wouldn't rate this as an easy thing to accomplish. <laughs> I've already done one. Um, but if you are up to it, I'm going to walk through the steps uh, and I'll show you the comparison start to finish. Um, all right, good. So I'm going to get my Dremel. I'm going to cut around and then I'll show you what that looks like after it's been cut. All right, and we're back. So uh, one of the things to note, you're going to want to make a cut about one centimeter-ish, let's say, about one centimeter above uh, the edge and you just go all the way around. Also, I forgot to mention, make sure, obviously, you got to disassemble the whole unit, get all the parts off. Um, but once you make that cut all the way around, this lens simply will pop off. And you're left with the unit uh, without the lens cover. But it is still screwed in, as you can see. Also, one thing to note, this cutting, it makes a lot of dust. So you're really gonna have to go through and clean up all of the um, plastic dust that's in the housing from the cutting. All right, so let's uh, take a break. I'll explain here in a second how you have to disassemble this unit, clean it up. Um, I'm actually gonna be painting all of the chrome pieces. Uh, so I'll walk through that as well. Um, but essentially you have to start with all of the little screws that are going around the periphery here. So let's... Uh, Take a break and we'll walk through. All right, so you can see I drew a little box around each one of these screws, right? You can see them through the, again, through the lens. You see where the screws come out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out that area so that I'm able to remove uh, the main accessories of the housing. Uh, and then that'll enable us to then get in and heat up the housing and get rid of the rest of the remainder of the headlight lens um, that is adhered and sealed to the housing. So, um, so we're gonna put these cuts in and then I should be able to lift up and remove the rest of the uh, plastic assembly that was the remnants of the lens. And again, for this, I am just using a Dremel with a simple cutoff wheel uh, to do this. 
So by now you're probably thinking, well, he just did a lot more work than he probably had to, and you would be right. So um, actually got to go and cut out much lower than I originally showed, right along the edge of the glass so that you can remove this piece here. And when you get this far, you pull it out from the top and you notice I, I have some, don't want this to fall, um, I have some tension here. That would be coming from this area and you can see there's butyl uh, that was put in for sealant and that butyl is adhered to the um, inside of this. So what I gotta do is I gotta get a razor blade knife exacto and cut around the perimeter of this whole thing and make sure that there's nothing um you know holding it together it's butyl here which we're going to play with a lot more in the future um and then this whole piece will come out i just want to show you this here there's a there's like a tab in here on the inside so you can lift it up and you can kind of see right there you just gotta take your time wiggling that and cut it with the uh, exacto knife as you're wiggling, and eventually it'll release that tab. Don't really want to break it off. If you do, it's not the end of the world. But uh, let's try and save it. All right, so I got it off. Uh, this is the troublesome tab uh, right there. You can see it has butyl on it. Didn't have to break it though, um, but you can see down in the little area with which it was mounted. There's a lot of carnage in there, so we've got to clean all that out. And look how messy this is. So I just want folks to appreciate the fact that, like, this isn't easy and uh, it creates a huge mess. And then I still have all of the old seal that I got to get out. So my next step is this. Um, I think a lot of folks just continue and pull out the seal from this step forward. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to disassemble all of these components because I'm going to paint them black. Um, and I also don't like working on this housing with the projector in all the electronics. So I'm going to disassemble the entire housing. Get it all cleaned up because there's dust everywhere. Um, and then uh, we can start painting and then work on... This is going to go in the oven We're going to, that's going to allow for us to remove, uh, heat up the butyl enough to remove the rest of the seal. Um, and then we'll clean everything out and start putting it all back together. So uh, next step, we should see this all disassembled. All right, here is my housing all stripped out. And then I have the components, which I'm going to spray paint here in a moment. Uh, the housing is going to go in an oven at 200 degrees for about 10, 15 minutes. That's gonna loosen up the butyl around the rest of the glass seal and I'm, I'll be able to uh, pull that off. And then these guys, I'm just gonna hit with VAT black spray paint for plastics and it's a high heat. So the best way to do this that I figured out is you wanna take your X-Acto knife, you wanna run outside and then you wanna run inside on the butyl seal. And then eventually, you'll cut it to the point that you can get it and then pull it out, which I'm gonna do off camera, but it's just an issue of cutting it and pulling it out. All right, the remnants of the lens is out and now we've gotta take care of this channel. So there's old butyl all in the channel. And what I found works best is a combination of getting yourself an old little screwdriver and just scraping. And then also just continuing to cut out bits and pieces as you can. Um, these little hook tools also tend to be helpful in getting, uh, removing. You can see I damaged my housing a little bit, um, cut through it. This is going to happen. Like I, I mean, if somebody says they do it all the time and they don't damage it, maybe they got more experience than me, but you're going to have little cracks around the housing. But when you seal it later, as long as you use enough butyl to fill it all in, you'll still get an airtight seal. But it's important that we clean out all of this uh, track where the new lens is going to mount. So I'm going to go through and just clean things up. Um, and then we'll go ahead and start putting things back together. Okay, I've got my housing here um, with all my components painted. 
and my channel cleaned out. And then I have my new lens and I've gone ahead and I've assembled, um, again, painted the components. Um, you have to screw in your new lens and all the mounting points. So don't forget those. And there's a few more, there's a bunch of them. I got one more to do there. Um, but yeah, everything is screwed in. On my new lens, I leave the plastic on, you know, while I'm working, not to make a mess. And then uh, when I'm all done, it'll look like this, which is the one that I've already done. Um, so it's quite a difference from before. Uh, but take your time. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of little parts here. You don't want to screw it up. Uh, but the paint did come out pretty nice on my on my housing components. So. Uh, all right, we'll keep working here, getting this all back together. All right, for putting in the butyl, I'm kind of just taking a thin rope, stretching it along here, and just tucking it in, all right? So this is just gonna be the first application. I'm just gonna get it in the channel, and then I'm gonna heat it up in the oven again, and I'm, when I install the seal, I'll have this butyl rope around the whole channel, and then I'm gonna go around it again and reseal it on the outside. So hopefully that makes sense. And here the two are ready to go back on the car. Um, as you can see, got a little bit of glare, but uh, both all sealed up, lens replaced. They look good. Um, I don't know if I'd recommend this. It was a little bit of a pain and uh, I don't know. I have a lot of thoughts on it. <laughs> so anyhow, but hey, I guess the results uh, speak for themselves. We'll see if they hold up. I'll post up in the comments uh, after I've driven on them for a while to see if we get condensation or any sort of weirdness with them. So thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful for people who are considering uh, this sort of a thing.